What's up guys, how's it going? We are gonna do some technical analysis right now. And we'll do it with this guy, Game of Trades, one of my faves. Hello and welcome back to Game of Trades, your number one channel for videos on the stock market and cryptocurrencies. This video is going to be focused on the S&P 500 that made quite some reversal right here. Just the other day, we topped out around this resistance level here. And as we had the Federal Reserve announce new rate hikes, we saw the markets tank down aggressively within the matter of a couple of hours. If you watched our last video on the S&P 500, you'll know that's exactly what we talked about a few Watch days it. ago, that we'd see the Federal Reserve begin to talk about tightening and that it would create some type of a risk off move in the market right as the market was beginning to build some pretty heavy divergence between the price and the RSI. But against what most people are saying right now online, whether that's on Twitter or on YouTube, calling for this to be the top of the market, expecting the Federal Reserve tightening to trigger an unprecedented bear market, thinking there's absolutely no way that the S&P 500 can still make higher highs while the Federal Reserve is tightening, I still think that we're going to get some pretty wild moves that we will be able to take advantage of as we get into this final phase of the bull run that we've had since 2009. We've broken out of this bull market price channel and we're really on an unprecedented rally that I think is going to continue for another few months now. So by the end of this video, you'll know exactly why we might not quite be done with the volatility in the short term and exactly the reasons why that might present some pretty big opportunities throughout the next few weeks that we will, of course, be covering on this channel. Now, if you're interested. so. One thing I like about him, uh, of course, you should definitely find a few people that you respect that also they're very clear and easy to understand what they're saying. And you should, if you don't know what he's saying, you should at least study a little bit of this, the technical analysis, because it is quite important because other people believe in it. When enough people believe in something, it usually uh, has some effect on the market. Um, but what I'm, what, one thing he said is, you know, these violent moves, uh, could create opportunities. Now, you have to be agnostic. He didn't say violently up or down. It doesn't matter. You can make money either going up or down. So you should be agnostic and not care where it goes as long as you know which direction it's going. So uh, that's what one of the things I like about him. He can make money. He makes good choices uh, no matter what. Because again, the bottom line is making profits, right? And making money off this. And we don't care if it goes up or down as long as we're on the right side of the trade in following these crazy markets with us make sure to click on that subscribe button and now without further ado let's get right into it technical picture first this is a daily chart of the S&P 500 that has been trading within this beautiful price channel for quite some time very clear and you can see the last thing that we covered on the last YouTube video that we made on the S&P 500 was this divergence that we had between the price that was going higher and the RSI that was going lower. Now, that's typically a sign that you're going to get a correction. And if you're at resistance, which we were right here, we were testing this line of resistance and very close to the upper end of the range of the price channel. That leaves a lot of vulnerability for the S&P 500 to come down. And so for example, you have the slightest bad news, the Federal Reserve says something a little bit hawkish and you have the S&P 500 tank down. Now, normally I wouldn't expect a massive correction with just divergence like this. You can see throughout 2021, we had quite a little bit of divergence, for example, right here between these highs and this high, there was some technical divergence with the price going higher and the RSI going lower, and then only triggered around a 4% correction. Why is that different now? Why would there be more downside potentially taking us down? to the bottom of this channel and potentially to these levels of horizontal support. And I'm going to give you the answer to that question because something that we do like to look at is the market breadth. Now, this is the S&P 500 stocks above their 200 day moving average, right? Let's zoom out a little bit. And this is just a beautiful indicator. And it's so important to watch because it tells you how many stocks are participating in a rally. When you have the stock market go up, 
and you have the breadth. So the number of stocks that are above the 200 day moving average also go up and stay high and make higher highs like the index that tells you you're in a broad healthy rally that most sectors are participating most stocks are participating in the rally but now look at what's happened since that high in april so <laughs> i'm watching this at the same time you are and i'm actually watching it for myself and learning as well so yeah this market breath is very important and i actually um knew about this a while ago and i've been tracking it as well one of the things that i've mentioned before in the previous videos is that the 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 previous rally the previous rally actually not only the previous rally this this whole major rally has been really on the backs of a few strong big tech names, big company, you know, mega, mega tech stocks. Uh, but most of the companies, most of the regular mid caps and smaller companies uh, have seen uh, not even close to the to the success uh, market highs as uh, uh, these mega cap stocks. And you're going to see it right now. I'm sure he's going to discuss the market breadth means most of the companies because, the, the, you know, the S&P 500 is 500 companies, but they're overweighted with these other, you know, with the top mega companies. But when we see market breadth like this where the mid caps and the smaller companies in the S&P 500 all trending downward that probably means that the economy as a whole because they represent a lot of the economy right is going down and it is a precursor uh, and foretelling the uh, that the major tech stocks and big stocks will also uh, follow so it's many believe it's a leading indicator 2021 we've had this deterioration in breadth where we've had this indicator come down significantly make lower highs along the way while the index has made higher highs along the way so that's telling us that since that may 2021 low here it's been a pretty weak rally from a breadth standpoint now think about how important it is right you have the stock market so the s p 500 trading at all-time all high so as high as it can possibly be but you've only got 70 percent of stocks that are actually trading above their 200 day moving average which is a key moving average so that's some pretty big divergence that we have here and another way of looking at it is by taking a look at the actual 200 day moving average on the s p 500 you can see where we're at we're quite significantly above that moving average while there's a significant portion of the stocks within the index that are actually below that moving average so, so when you when you see something like this it should definitely give you pause uh definitely give you pause to how powerful this rally could keep on continuing to go uh, and you probably don't want to start buying now when you see a divergence like this, when you see a divergence like this, you if you were a little bit more risk uh, uh, risk on, you want to take on more risk, then you would think about shorting the market, but definitely not buying in a type of a situation like this. So I think we get a partial retracement of this move here. I think we can get a move back down to that 200 day moving average right here before we resume this big bull run. Now again, that would take us down to the 200 day moving average, which hasn't been tested since June 2020. If we jump on a longer term chart, you can see it's pretty healthy to test the 200 day moving average, right? It often acts as a significant level of support where the stock market can, you know, take a break and bounce back off with over strength. and over again. It can often create broad rallies from that test of the 200 day moving average so that type of move if we get that and i think there's a non-negligible chance that we get that type of correction that could cause a nice buying opportunity from a technical standpoint and you can see let's zoom in here where that 200 day moving average is sitting it's sitting just above this price channel support so he's talking about uh hitting that 200 uh moving day average then going back up at the same time, if there are some fundamental changes in the U.S. economy or the world, <laughs> world economy, uh, like China, like I've been talking about, then if it cracks below that and stays below that uh, for a period of time, then it could be truly a bear, a market uh, recession, even potentially depression, depending on um, uh, the, the dollar, hyperinflation, all that type of stuff. So it could definitely, uh, I'll be looking out for this as well. Uh, when it starts going down, that 200 day moving average will be key, but um, I may not be, I might be buying, but I might be even selling more. So it's definitely not, uh, 
definitely we cannot say it's going to bounce and continue going up because that might be really the true end of this decade long uh, bull market. Let's zoom out. This is a price channel that we've been looking at for quite some time that's taken into account the entire bull run since 2009 that we broke out of in April and that remains support and it's currently coinciding with the 200 day moving average. Now that's just from a technical standpoint. Okay, so we covered why, you know, we could see a little bit more downside, the momentum divergence, the breadth divergence that, you know, really needs to retrace part of that move before we get a broad rally. And then another thing that we've... And these are the times where you could take off some profit. When you see something like this, when you see something like this, I'm definitely not a hold, uh, hold no matter what and buy no matter what. That's not me. When I see something like this, I take, I take money off the table. I take risk off the table. I sell because I'd rather protect from the downside than capture that little bit more on the upside uh, without confirmation. Okay. And right now, uh, because of all the things he said and much more, uh, I've, I've already sold everything, but the people are still in the market. When you see something like this, you should definitely step back, pause and say, you know what? It might be, it might be be smart to take some profits right now and just kind of you know protect yourself because if it uh, goes the other way you could actually buy more and make more money as if, if it does go uh, hit that 200 day and, and come come back up talked about very recently is the fact that the Federal Reserve has not begun to tighten yet and that's extremely important because it's only tightening that can cause bear markets and can cause recessions like 2008 and like the dot-com bust. That's what can trigger significant downside on the stock market. But you can see between the beginning of tightening and the recession, it's often a multiple year time lapse. So I think that's a narrative that a lot of people are getting wrong. They're confusing the beginning of tightening with the beginning of a recession. It's not the same thing and there's often a time lapse in between. Yes, and I also touched this, uh, touch on this in prior videos as well. Whatever happens now, because of the economy, US economy is so large, so massive, it cannot quickly snap, you know, snap your fingers and change direction. But the effects that, the things that we do, especially the Fed is, he's saying, the, uh, what he does now, what they do now, could definitely affect the market in a negative way, which will trigger the recession uh, a year, even 18 months, even two years later. But that then can be the true recession, true bear market, will la which could last multiple years. So this is, these are all things that you have to pay attention to. But, you know, um, the Fed is going to. They have to. They have to raise rates. They have to reduce their balance sheet. So it's not a matter of if it's a matter of when and how severe, how deep, how aggressive they are. But because you know they are, that means that we should always be ready to pull the trigger to sell. We have not had the beginning of the tightening cycle. We've only had a little bit of tapering. But what those people are getting right is that it's going to scare a lot of people. Right? The beginning of tightening systematically creates risk off moves in the market. We've talked about this before. I want to really press on that point because it's incredibly important. A lot of the day to day price action, the small swings in price, they're not really justified by anything other than what's happening in the news, what's happening with monetary policy, what kind of announcements we're having. And that can create a little bit of, you know, additional volatility. And so with that Fed announcement hanging over the stock market, if we have a switch in momentum, we could have a little bit of a deeper correction than what we've been used to throughout the past couple of years. Now, another point that I briefly like to talk about is that time lapse that we just talked about right between the first rate hike and the recession. I think it's very possible that that time lapse is the shortest one we've ever seen. Mm -hmm. I think the economy is particularly. Yeah, this is I totally, totally agree on this. The time lapse will be shorter than anything else before because of the massive, massive sensitivity uh, in the market has right now. Because it is so, it is at record highs. Uh, we are at record inflation. We are at record balance sheet. Everything is everything is set up that uh, one little tiny, uh, tiny trigger. Uh, it's like a hair trigger that could go downward. So the the market turns could definitely be shorter. 
uh, and I believe definitely will be shorter than anything in the past. So what the Fed does, monetary fiscal policy, what they do, it's going to may not trigger it instantly, but very, very soon afterwards, it's going to turn it very um, into negative territory. Fragile right now in the post-pandemic world. And I think the slightest amount of tightening is exactly. quickly going to have repercussions on the financial markets and on the under. So then if you know this is gonna happen, then why would you go all in? Why would you still be all in right now? You know, I guess if you're younger, you're more aggressive and you want to, it's like, you know, playing chicken with a, you know, you're, you're in a car and you know it's gonna crash uh, and you wanna, you wanna get right close, right as close as you can before jumping out. And that can, um, that could burn you, you know? So you should start, if you know this is gonna happen with the Fed, you should start start uh, becoming a little bit more conservative, conservative and start taking some money off the table. Underlying economy. But of course, that's a topic that we're going to be discussing in detail for future videos. If you're interested in following this with us, make sure to click on that subscribe button. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to smash the like button. Now, of course, that paints quite a doom and gloom picture. I am sorry about that, but it is just where we think we are in the cycle mm -hmm. in the most objective way possible we're seeing a lot of excesses a lot of leverage a lot of overvaluations overextension we're trying to navigate that as successfully as possible we recently posted a premium video talking about the commodities cycle we think that's going to be probably one of the most crazy investment opportunities this decade apart from Bitcoin, being bearish on the stock market does not mean that we do not find attractive opportunities elsewhere. We have a detailed macro strategy that I think is going to make us come out of this period of economic and market volatility very successful. This is, you know what, when you trade stocks, um, technical analysis, again, is very, very important. And you should realize if you just study for a while, even if you're like, you know, you're, you're, you're doing it, you, you've been doing it for a few years, you're still a beginner compared to some of these people here. Uh, I suggest that you should learn technical analysis, not to base it all your trading on your own technical analysis, but use your knowledge of technical skills to, technical analysis, TA, in conjunction with the people that you respect and have proven again and again, who showed their trades up front, up front, telling you when to buy, when to sell, not just giving you this fluff, but actually giving you hardcore buy and sell signals, uh, recommendations, and they've been right again and again. Those are the people that you want to follow. And there are several here that are on YouTube that I will be sharing with you. This guy is good. I like him a lot. And there's others as well. So you take what they say, then you have to understand what they're talking about. If you don't understand what you're talking about, you have to do free... Uh, man, I'm just tongue-tied today. You have to do further research. Don't let it just skip over your head and just like whatever. You should uh, write down whenever they say something, divergence or, you know... Um, uh, you know, tightening, you know, monetary policy, fiscal policy. If you don't understand these things uh, and you want to risk your money or your family's money, you're dumb. Okay? You're dumb. You're going to lose money. So you should understand these comments, these terms, so then you can, it will give you a much better picture of, of what's really going on and it's going to help you develop real strategies, winning strategies that will help you make money in the long run. Not only make money, protect yourself from losing money. So I suggest you follow this person and if you like this type of TA analysis, let me know in the comments below and also if you have a video or you have a, a YouTuber or something you want me to do a reaction video, please leave that in the comments below. I love you guys. Take care. See you soon.